The interesting thing about Bowne Park as an archaeological dig is that it's not just an historical site. This is where they actually laid the foundations of a colony. Nearly 160 years after Tasman discovered Van Diemen's Land, 49 British citizens landed at Risdon Creek to establish a settlement. In charge of the settlement, Her Britannic Majesty's junior lieutenant, John Bowen, in his early 20s. The landing I have selected at Risdon Cove seems ideally situated. Half of my party of 49 are convicted felons of the worst kind, and the soldiers sent to guard them seem little better. At Risdon Cove, an 11-gun salute welcomed the new Lieutenant Governor, Colonel David Collins, when he arrived to take charge. He immediately disapproved of Bowen's choice of Risdon Cove as a settlement site. The landing place is far from suitable, being accessible only at high tide. And the freshwater stream boasted of five months earlier is now but a few pools of muddy water. Collins chose another location and decided to settle on what is now Hobart Town. I have bivouacked at Sullivan's Cove on the southwestern shore, under the brow of Table Mountain. A clear stream flows in abundance from a rock high on the mountain. These past three days, I've had the Reverend Knopwood preparing a sermon on the great future of the colony. But even the confidence of Colonel David Collins and the sermons of Reverend Knockwood could not change what was to happen in the young settlement. The birth of the colony was not without pain. Two years after their arrival, the whole colony was in need of everything. They were ill-equipped and supply from Sydney was irregular. By 1807, they were close to famine. It was an alien land that did not welcome interlopers, but the interlopers stayed and built. More than 74,000 convicts were transported to the island. Their labour and skills would turn it into rich farmland, as was predicted by John Oxley. My dear sir, in my capacity as Surveyor General of New South Wales, I have had occasion to travel to many parts of the island Van Diemen's Land, and never did the sun in his great round orb shine on a finer land than that which lies between Hobart and Launceston. This rich interior land will afford pasturage and contain at no distant period flocks and herds not inferior in size and number to those of the celebrated plains of Paraguay. I remain your most obedient servant, John Oxley. trouble with the Aborigines since the days of the first settlement, when Bowen reported, As for the natives, not apprehending that they would be of any use to us, I have not made any search after them, thinking myself well off if I never see them again. On Thursday, May 4th, 1804, their destiny had been set when a party of spear-carrying Aborigines were fired on by the startled settlers at Risdon Cove. They were the first shots fired in a fight with the Aborigines that was to last some 20 years. The Aborigines saw their tribal lands changing to farms. They retaliated against the takeover and exploitation of their land.
Lieutenant Governor George Arthur attempted to bring reconciliation between the Aborigines and the settlers. Cartoon posters covered the countryside, showing in simple terms the penalties for disorder, but with little success. When I was a young girl, my mother was stabbed to death, my uncle was shot, and my sister was taken away. Starting in 1828, Augustus Robinson set out to save the native people. With the help of an Aboriginal woman, Truganini, he found 200 of them whom he took to Flinders Island to live. By 1842, the last of the Tasmanian people had been taken from their homeland. Separated from their birthplace, many became ill and died. Within 73 years of Bowen's landing at Risdon Cove, the last full-blooded Aborigine, Truganini, died. In 1804, the early settlers around Risdon Cove had reported a large number of whales in the Derwent River. Then came the whalers. Their ships tied up in Hobart Town, bringing trade and wealth. Within the next hundred years, Hobart was well established as a seaport, but the whaling industry was finished due to over-exploitation. In 1825, the citizens of Van Diemen's Land had successfully petitioned to separate the colony from the government of New South Wales. Yet still they become impatient for more privileges. The immigrant population is treated very liberally indeed. In just one year, I have handed out more than half a million acres of prime grazing land. Still they become impatient for more privileges. They must be constantly reminded that the colony is primarily intended for a penal settlement. It was a strange irony. The prosperity of the colony was due to convict labour. They were assigned servants under almost slave conditions. The settlers who'd grown rich drove their carriages over convict-built roads to convict-built churches and public buildings. But for how long were they to carry the stigma of being a convict colony? Many of the settlers wanted transportation to the colony ended. August 10, 1853, almost 50 years from the day when young Lieutenant Bowen stepped ashore at Risdon Cove, was a public holiday a day of celebrations. Transportation of convicts was ended. Within a few short years, a constitution was framed to make Tasmania independent and freely governed. They were no longer controlled from London. 